Welcome to the Bougie Black Brother Network. Good evening and welcome to Fade to Black Cinema. I'm Michael, your bougie black brother, and I'm here with my co-host, Olifu. Hello. And today we just finished seeing number two, Sicario, Day of the Soldado. Day of the Soldado. So, uh, we were huge fans of the first Sicario done by Dennis Villeneuve, whoever, um, but one of our favorite uh, directors. And I didn't think um, they should have done another one without him. I was really concerned that they would ruin the feel and everything to do with the movie. But the previews looked like it was going to be really exciting. Did you get the chance to see any of the previews? Of the of this? Yeah, this one. No, no. No, we did see it. I seen a couple. We saw it in the movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um so when we saw it, I was kind of like, "Oh, okay. Okay. Seems still intense like the other one." Um but really didn't know if it was going to continue on with you know, with the previous uh characters that was on there. Without the one main lady that was there, um, I forgot her name, but um, with her up inside of there, so it was Emily Blunt that was on there. Mm-hmm. She played Kate Macer or Kate whoever. Yeah, but great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should see that one first. It's a good standalone. You don't have to see it separately, but. It'll familiarize you with the characters. So the way the characters act in this one, as opposed to the other one, you would get some familiarization of the two. But anywho, so when you started looking at this, what was your thoughts, man? What, the the beginning of this? Yeah. How it started out? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, I, I wasn't expect. I didn't know what to expect. That's one thing. I didn't know where the storyline was going to go because, you know, it, the first one was all about the Mexican cartel. And this one was all about, you know, um, the terrorists coming from, assumingly coming from other places, mm-hmm. terrorize, you know, doing terrorism. So, you know, that to me was, was interesting because, like I said, I didn't know where it was going. I really didn't. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. So the because the first part was all about terrorists, mm-hmm. and then when you when it got further in, it was like it wasn't it didn't associate with that in some way. It was the government associating with that okay. more so than Mexico associating with that. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So um, to put it in perspective, um, the synopsis says. The drug war on the U.S.-Mexico border has escalated to the cartels have begun trafficking terrorists across the U.S. border. To fight the war, the federal agent Matt Graver reteams with Alejandro the Sicario assassin. So he teams up for that. But like Leisha was saying, what it started off to be was... We saw some activity of some immigrants or migrants crossing the border, but the one uh, that they caught seemed to go against the other migrants. And when they cornered him, he blew himself up. And it was kind of like, whoa, what the hell was that all about? And so when they started investigating, they had like three prayer rugs. So it was kind of like, uh-oh, there was some terrorists crossing the border. And then they showed another scenario after that that showed uh, four terrorists going into something that looks like a target um, that they walked up into and start detonating themselves. So flash to the Secretary of Defense and uh, what's his name? Matt Graver, Matt, who is Josh Brolin. So Josh Brolin has been really busy this season because, you know, he 
He's just done a lot of different man, stuff. He's so damn. so well, he know, played in Deadpool. Yeah, man. Um, he played Thanos, and now he's back in this one from there. And in all three, he played a damn good role. He played so a damn good role. Yes. Josh has a, a threefer or whatever they want to call it, a trifecta of three hits that um actually he actually co-starred in. So he's kind of like perhaps the star or co-star with Benico de Toro who reprised his role as Alejandro. But anyway, so the Secretary of Defense needed someone to infiltrate the border because they know when he did in the previous movie, uh, they don't say previous movie, but in the previous movie, and he found out that he was dealing with some of the uh, Somalian pirates, and they found that some of the terrorists got on a boat that got into the United States. Mm -hmm, so which mm -hmm. made it really, really, really interesting because, you know, he was telling them. So he captured the one guy and they came in and special ops came in Somalia and captured the guy and, you know, pretty much terrorized him by killing his family and showing him what he could do to get information. So. So the whole objective was how do we get these cartels to stop helping the terrorists? What can we do to distract them or get them to stop? Um, so Matt or Josh Brolin said, we need to get the cartels to go to war against each other to keep themselves actually occupied. Mm -hmm. So that was like the big objective from right, that. Right. So once you saw that, did you start understanding like, Oh, so what their their intent wasn't the terrorists anymore. Their intent was um, the the you know the cliched phrase of shake the bushes and see what comes out. So they they devised a plan of one of the head cartels' um, daughter had a daughter, yes. and they was going to kidnap them. Yes, and then turn around and make it seem like the other cartel kidnapped kidnapped them. them. Yeah. So you looked at that and. The tension was still there. I, I, what I liked from the beginning, all throughout the movie, the way the first Sicario was, there was a high level of tension. Yeah, it they it was kept it kept consistent with the you know with all the you know all the excitement and you know um, them tracking down the terrorists and then you know they came you know cross certain people cross path mm -hmm. you know and they did a damn good job with keeping that consistent with the first movie. Yeah, so, and then they brought back some characters that you kind of sort of was familiar with, which was which was good. Um, I like the fact that, that, that they did because that was, you know, uh, Matt's crew because he held on to his crew that he normally uses. And it was very um, current. It had a current feel to it with with the border and what the government is saying that we're we're bringing over criminals and terrorists across our border um this kind of just showed a a level of concern or why you should be concerned and and they illustrated like really really cool but it also showed what the CIA does to manipulate what happens in our country as well as in other countries and that's exactly what it was all about it What's was that? manipulating how how the American people had to see what was going on, even though it wasn't really real. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that kind of pissed me off in the movie, but still. No, so so how did it piss you off, though? Because you know how they were, tr how the government was just doing crooked shit. I mean, they wanted him. They they say, hey, you got full carte blanche to yep, do the hell you, you could do the hell you want to do. He's as long like, as we okay. get this done. You sure? He said, yeah, we're going to get dirty. He said, I don't care. But when it came down to when he started killing the police, and they wasn't police because they were in police cars. But they were police. They, okay, so, but they were working for the cartel. Yeah, they was working for one of the heads. Yeah. But that's but, the corruption in Mexico. Right. And so, so no matter what, the corruption in Mexico, they buy out whoever they want to buy out. Right. So with that happening, it was like, no, you can't do it no more. What, the, what you mean you can't do it no more? You told me that, yeah. You told me I got I could do whatever I want to do. No, it made us look bad. We came in the country. I'm like, yeah. what the hell? But what I what we was discussing earlier before, when we was in the car coming back was the the reason why they really got cold feet was 
the terrorists that blew themselves up, all of them didn't come across the border. Some of them were from states around them, like one of them, they said it was New Jersey and some yeah. other places. Yes, exactly. So the concern was, even though we're saying they're coming across the border, the press and everything, and they didn't kind of elaborate, but you can assume that the press and everything said, these are where these people are actually fun from. These are homegrown terrorists, terrorists yeah. uh, Muslims that's already in our country. It's not like... They left and they, they snuck over the border. Yeah, they found some people that snuck over the border. But in this case, um, we can't put the emphasis that we need to do something at our borders when they're here already. Right. So, and, and that's the problem with trying to deal with terrorism. You don't know where it's coming from. And it's not a silver bullet to knock out the one thing and then terrorism stops. It's... It comes from all angles, from different people at different times, and and you know it was it had really good political overtones, but the suspense and the drama and the tension that was all throughout the movie, you was kind of like whoa. But again, you dealing with another country, so this, these CIA people, you know, they dealt with black ops people. So you know, um, the guy Matt met with. Some, I don't know who, but he had like military operation stuff. He had helicopters and he said, I'm going to need $10 million a month, um, uh, 150% over uh, what it is as well as something else. And he was like, you got it. He said, the defense is going to take care of this. He said, yep, you got it. So he got everything he wanted it, all of the support, all the tech, all the soldiers, everything. He got it all. And their attack was Mexican cartels. But what they failed to realize, the Mexican cartel is still part of the government. Yep. Yeah. Because they bought off government officials and they bought off uh, the police and, and different things like that. Yeah, because they're me- so it was all focused on trying to keep the cartel fighting each other. Yep. That's what it was all about. So what they did was they kidnapped. One of the cartel's daughters. Mm-hmm. And she was a little badass little girl. Yeah, a little you wanted, badass. You wanted to kick her a little, I wanted to beat her ass. But when once they kidnapped her, I I mean, I told Mike, I said, she's fucked. Her, her, I mean, she's going to be mentally just traumatized. traumatized because of this. Because basically what they did was they set it up for where they kidnapped her, took her across the border, brought her into Texas... Sat her there, make her think that the the police, American police, you know, DEA and all mm-hmm. of them were um saving her. Saving her. And she wasn't that stupid. That yeah. girl, she knew who the she knew who the guy was. Cause it was you know, during the whole thing, you could see them actually looking at her face. Mm-hmm. You know, she kept looking at his face. She kept looking at his face. And and they did a good job. The camera work was really centered on her expressions. Mm-hmm. And her expressions was kind of like what the fuck? Yes, yes. She didn't have to say it, but you can tell she was kind of like, I don't, something's wrong here. Right. You know, her, her, her whole demeanor was something is wrong. Yeah, because they really were supposed to kill her. No, they didn't. They weren't supposed to kill her? No, from the beginning, they didn't supposed to kill her. Okay. The, the intent was to get them to fight each other, and then the government, uh, the U.S. government said, we helped, so now you need to help us, and so... They can be part of finding out where these terrorists are coming from. So to infiltrate within, it's kind of like you a favor for a favor. So as they warn against each other, the the catalyst is really the daughter and the DEA or the government, uh, U.S. government saying, "I did you a favor." So long term, you would get a favor from saving his daughter. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, the cartel leader was, "I don't give a damn who saved my daughter." Whoever has her killed them. So they set up an escort to get them out and really get her safe. And the police escort that was actually escorting them attacked them. And she was right in the middle of that. And you can tell she didn't know what to do. She she was just, you know, one minute she was afraid. The next minute she panicked. And then the next minute she was afraid again. And and. That's when you was like, wow, she's really going to be traumatized by this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even in the beginning when they captured her, it was kind of like, eh, this is weird. 
you know, you can tell she's like, something just doesn't seem right here. You know what I mean? And when they, when the DEA brought her into this hangar full of military people and she was staying right there, she was like, something's just not right. But anyway, after they got attacked, she ran off while they was into a serious gunfight. And when they ran off, he he followed her, Alejandro. Alejandro. Uh, the Sicario uh, actually tracked followed her, down. her, tracked her down. Yeah. Somebody tried to capture her and he killed him. And so he tried to find a way to get her across the border. Then that's where, you know, I think where you said you got pissed off and how the government turns on you. Even though they tell you this is what they want you to do. Yeah, exactly. And then they turn around and say, oh, I'm going to shut you down. That's it. You're like, wait a minute. You told me this is what we had to do. So they, they found out in the president of the United States, because they said POTUS, said, you know, you need to shut this down because our intent wasn't to go to war with the Mexican government. And he was like, they shot us. The hell you wanted us to do? Right. These aren't the right. They, these were paid uh, employees of the cartel, and they was kind of like, "Nah, never mind. Uh, uh-uh, don't want that." Yeah, they didn't want to hear that. Yep. So, so it it just made a turn. But all up to that, there was just tension of what's next, or how do you set up the next plan? And there was a plan on top of the next plan, and it looked like it was going right until the Mexican government turned on them again. You know, because. They did that before. Right. You know what I mean? Into the first movie. But then they turned on them and then they was left out to say, look, how do I fucking get back? Thank God they had um, drone coverage um, kind of flying overhead, giving them eyes in the sky. Besides the chip tracker that he had. Yeah, the chip tracker to track Alejandro down. But I'm saying how they knew that they was going to get attacked when um they was in a convoy trying to get away and everything so right, right. it was just it was really intense this i mean and it, the, i think this one had more intensity going throughout the movie and there was a really great emotional point in there when he alejandro and the little girl isabel uh walked onto this farm and they got to this farm and there was a now that was cool. And there was a deaf guy there, and he was afraid. And he was he was trying to talk to him, and he was like, "No, no, no, no." Um, um, and he starts sign language into him. And then Alejandro started slowly, though he was slowly. It didn't look like he knew, but as he continued on, you see that he he knew sign language, right, right. And he was talking with them, and. And the guy was still afraid because he kept his hands up. And he right. kept trying to tell him, put your hands down. I'm not um, cartel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mafioso. But the guy was still like, you can tell he was not. He was like, look, this is some bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. But then he said, how do you know sign language? He said, my daughter was deaf. Yes, he sure did. And he said, your daughter's deaf? And he said, was. was. And he showed the sign language of mm-hmm backwards his hand go back right right and then he was like okay and they kind of just go a little back and forth and he just said i just need your help and you and that interaction right there without saying a word but him communicating with this guy that was afraid Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he was able to calm him down through sign language i just thought was really kind of dramatic for me i was like wow that was really emotional right there because he had to tell something about himself to this guy in order for this guy to believe him. And he didn't want to kill him, but hey, if he had to, he would. Right. But he didn't want to, but he was able to convince him to help him and Isabel uh, to get food and, and get some time and then drive him into town and everything. So there was a foreshadowing point uh, um where the secondary story that they showed was um, drug mules. I mean, not drug mules, the coyotes, or, or they call coyotes, which helps uh, the migrants go over the border. So they pay a certain amount of money, and then they smuggle them across the border. And there's a lead person. So in the beginning of the movie, there's a young kid. Um, he's with his family. They live right by the border. I was like, God damn, you got houses right next to where the fence is. You know what I mean? 
but he has rel- relatives that deal with smuggling. Right. And so you see that secondary storyline building behind this one that we just was talking about. And I knew it was going to interconnect, but I just didn't know when it would interconnect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So did you did you see that it was going to touch together at any given time? I knew that when he seen him in the car, they weren't going to cross path again. Yeah. Yeah, so he was at the mall, and then, you he know, did. he looked right at him, and he looked at him. Because, what's the name? Uh, Matt gave him, said something smart to him, but... He was like, get your ass up out of here, like, or Harondo didn't do, he didn't say Yeah, Alejandro anything. just was like... Look, he just looked at him. He mm-hmm. just looked at him. But he gave him a look like, you see me. Yeah. And I see you, too. Yeah. But he just didn't realize that they would see each other again. Because, you know, small world, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is... Mexico is huge. And Texas is huge. You, you don't never know who you're going to see, but they did. Yeah, so, and I thought that was interesting because how that all played out was kind of good, how they mm-hmm. played out with each other. Because he needed to get across the border anyway and c- ran into um, these people, well, these groups that does push people, send, ship or pay to get across the border. Mm-hmm. The, the migrants. Yeah, right. and um, and then when the guy, the young boy recognized him, he told his boys. Mm-hmm. You know, and that but I, I found that interesting though because, you know, once he told his cousin because his he had like two cousins, one cousin that lived over in Mexico who controlled all that, then the other cousin who got him into it that lived in Texas with him. Mm-hmm. So when he told both his cousins, and they stopped the bus, and when they was trying to go over to get to the border. He said, yeah, uh, I work for Reyes. And he was like, oh, really? And he was like, yeah. He said, just call him. He was like, okay. And then he was getting ready to call, and then he just grabbed him and tied him up, and they took him away. So I'm not sure because I didn't interpret that right. I don't know if it was they said, we don't need you. We'll get the reward from Reyes by bringing his daughter back. Now, see, I didn't understand that either. Because he never, it? never, nobody, you didn't see nobody com- contact or communicate. No. So, so it, it gave it, left it up in the air. Was, were they part of the other cartels? So they really wanted to kill her or whatever? Or were they part of Reyes or not part of any of them? But wanted to see if they can get a reward for the girl by by eliminating him. But just well, between that, we don't know. Yeah, because they didn't show just, no. They didn't show no kind of. I got that. But what I'm saying is, it made it. It made you think of what happened. You know what I mean? Even though you you would never know, but it was. Well, it was interesting. the same thing with the guy who had the pickup truck who who, who got her. Yeah. You know so yeah. So he. He pulls somebody out of the truck. You know what I mean? Right. When Okay, so when he, when she ran to the pickup truck, right? No, 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 no. Before that, remember, there was, he, it was a guy that grabbed that guy out of the truck and then he took the truck. Right, right. So where but was where, that? Where the fuck did that come from? Exactly. So which there is was, cool, though. It was, it was, that's random situations, which was, I still liked it. I didn't need to have a purpose. You know what I mean? It was just random. But, you know, during that time, there were people looking for his daughter. Because remember, even a deaf guy said, that's the little girl from the TV that was kidnapped. So Mexico knows his daughter was kidnapped. And so people were looking for them. I'm not sure if there was a reward, award, or whatever like that. But it was interesting that they set it up that they didn't need to explain everything. But you knew the purpose. Right. So I'm, I was content with the purpose, not the explanation. The purpose I knew, so I, I just survived that. So one of the other dramatic parts was we we assumed that, you know, when Alejandro got caught and they taped him up and they was going to execute him. So they took him out into this whole big ditch area and shit. And I was like, maybe they ended the movie – um, with him dead. With, with killing off some characters and everything. So, or then on the other hand, I was like, well, where's the helicopters at? They'll come and save him. Because that's your typical thing. 
Usually. Right, and because you saw the helicopters. They was on their way. Right, but, but remember, from the sky, he, they showed him dead. No, 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 no. They they showed him on the ground, but then pr- prior to that, they said, oh, we're just 15 minutes out. Then I was like, oh, they're getting close. So, because you, you never know time. In a movie, you don't know. Time is can be 15 minutes or time can be 15 minutes and two minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no time. So I didn't know if they were close or they weren't close. So they said two minutes, but when by the time they get two minutes, he was he dead. He was already dead. Yep, exactly. So uh, Assumingly. Yeah. Assume. So he was shot. Right. So <laughs> fast rewind back. So one of the kids didn't shoot him, and then the, the cousin shot his ass. And then he gave it to the boy that saw him and told on him. Mm-hmm. He gave it to him, and he shot him. And it was like, bam. And... You know, the first glance, for most people, is like, just shot him in his head. So he's dead. But I saw that the bullet was closer to the front of his face. Exactly. And I when I too. saw the front of his face, I'm like, wow, is he really dead? Or maybe the angle is telling me he shot him in the face. Right. And it was in his face, but it was his head. So I didn't know. But So I kept it quiet because when he shot him, I was like, maybe... They want to end it with him dead. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. if I would have yelled out, because sometimes I yell out like, he's not dead. Watch this. They shot him in his face and the bullet went through his face. So he's faking and he won't get up and show whatever. But I I wasn't sure because you don't know the intent of the movie. Right. So I kind of let it go. So and then the the CIA people was tracking down the tracker because the tracker was on the girl. Remember, he put it on right, the girl's shoes. shoes. Uh-huh. So they was tracking the tracker. So as they tracked the vehicles, they wind up getting them and sh- shot them all up, left them out in the uh, middle of the street. He said, what are we going to do with her? Because they were supposed to kill her. They was her. like, what are you doing? And he took the girl. And he was like, um, we'll, take, we'll, pr- we'll, we'll take it and protect. Um, witness protection witness protection very mm-hmm. good I was going to say protective custody but I was like that's for cops but um, yeah witness protection and then and they just flew away but then all of a sudden they take you back to the big ditch area and he just goes ah, ah, and he wakes up and I was like she shot him in his face I said they shot him in his face and then they show the bullet go through one cheek mm-hmm. out and the, out the other yeah. and then you know it's obvious ways he could have got loose and he got loose and then he he wind up getting to a truck um that most of them was dead and i was like okay he got that far but he was blacking in and out of consciousness doing all of that but then out of the blue um the mexicans kids from the other side actually flagged him down they blinked their lights and then they turned around but I was wondering why he had them grenades. He grabbed like two grenades. God damn, he sure did. And I was like, what the fuck is he grabbing grenades for? So they came in handy because as they came beside him and tried to shoot him, he, he, he took it off. He threw one inside of the goddamn yeah, he car. He threw it in the car. And they blew their ass up. And, you know, he, he hit the side of the road, caught his breath, and then he just moved on. So it was kind of like, gotcha. You got the CIA people as having the young girls witness protection and then you had the one kid oh we didn't say that too the one kid that shot him he was so yeah he was so disturbed or just by, traumatized by by he, him killing that guy he jumped off the he truck he jumped off the truck sure and it was kind of like man mm-hmm. i'm out of here yep walked yep and he walked back to wherever and you know probably in mexico that's what they do so he he just walked out yeah but at the end so at the end, they said one year later, and you see that he was really part of um, either the cartel or whatever because he was tattooed down from his neck all the way down, his arms. And um, he always go to the mall to pick up either the list of the people or money or whatever. So he goes into this one store, and when he opens the door, there's Alejandro. And Alejandro said, nah, uh-uh. Come on in. That's right. He said, Come we need in. to talk. He was like, uh, so you want to be a Sicario, huh? We need to talk. Yep. And then he slowly closed the door. So if there's another one, it's almost like, will he be his protege and he'll get this kid to be an assassin just like him? Yep. To yep. be working against the cartel. And then the CIA guys, since they don't have a relationship anymore because he's supposed to be dead, 
does is he going to have the kid be his you know his forward sicario or his forward assassin in place of him and have this kid run around and do all of that exactly so it was a great intense damn movie i really liked it i liked it as much as the first one I, I I think the tension and and the way he directed the first one, the actors played a lot better. Right, right. The acting on here was good though. I'm not saying that it wasn't good, but the acting on the first one was, was really it intense. It was better. It was very intense. Yeah, it was I really much better. Like how it yeah. was. This so, one, I mean, I I mean, to me, you know, I love the action. I like the 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 shooting and the killing and you know how they did it it was like how they strategically do it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then um it just said you know how the government works yeah when it comes so down that was a good turn on that because right. the the first one was about how the government used the FBI so the CIA can do things mm-hmm. if the FBI didn't wasn't in um in line with what was going on they wouldn't be able to do certain things mm-hmm. so they used the FBI but overall, it was all about the cartels and, and trying to stop the drug war, even though the CIA said, we don't really want the drug war to stop. Right. We just want to control it. It's not to stop it. It's to control it because you can't stop it. It's just going to be another one. And he said that to the, to the Secretary of Defense with all them generals there. He was like, it, you can't stop it. If you kill the one guy, 50 more break up. Yep, that's exactly He said, right. so you just kind of need to have that. In place, he said, "We can we can make them fight each other." He said, "We we will have them at war with each other, and then we can stop the infiltration of the terrorists coming in because they'd be so concerned with warring against each other." And I, I just thought that was so interesting the way they kind of wrapped that up and and said, "This is the strategy that we're going to use." And another thing is, they never showed her father. You know, you you heard that he was say, trying to get his daughter back, but you never seen him trying yeah. to tell him to find my damn daughter. He don't have to. So I, I like that, too. I like the fact that they didn't show him because you don't have to know who he, he has so many people that the head of the cartel doesn't have to tell you what needs to be done. They know what needs to be done. And then there's people who execute that. So all they wanted to show is the people out there finding his daughter or killing the people who had something to do with it or or may have something to do with it because they don't know that the 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 government the US government had anything to do with it but they wanted to kill them anyway mm-hmm. just to get to the girl mm-hmm. which was like damn these guys are really ruthless because that's who they are they they ruthless that way you know what i mean so if you had to rate it what would you rate this one i'm going to have to say a 7 Wow, really? Yeah. I, I loved it. I said an 8.5. Yeah. And I, the reason why I say 8.5, I will continue to watch this one. Just like I love the first one, I love this well, one. Well, you know, we, I, you know, that's true. No, you said a 7, though. No, no, no. That has nothing to do with my rating. You're right. That's true. We will watch it over again. So I, I like these type of movies. And the reason why I like them is because every movie doesn't have to tell you everything. It doesn't have to tell you. If okay. you're paying attention, okay. you always know what's going on. And I like those movies more so than... I hate movies that kind of says, you're not smart enough. I got to tell you everything. I don't like those kind of movies. Okay. Because they just... They, they're, they're saying to you as a viewer that you're too stupid to figure this out yourself. And um, the one thing that I did like about this, and because it was similar to a feel that I have, this is the guy, he wrote... First of all, he wrote the first Sicario. So it was easy for him to transition to that. That's one good thing. He also wrote uh, a movie that we we enjoyed uh, called Wind River. And Wind River was about the Alaskan uh, Eskimos that was got raped by these contractors. And they send in a woman to do the investigation. Elizabeth Olsen. She was the the investigator, and Jeremy Reamer was the tracker. So he was helping her in the area. And come to find out, that storyline led them all the way back to um, the Eskimo girl having a relationship with one of the contractors, and he killed them both. 
and oh well, the guys killed them both. But the but the way the story was done so well, and the violence in that was kind of like so intense. And then the one that we didn't see was Hell or High Water, and he got nominated for best screenplay uh, as an Oscar. And um, we just didn't get a chance to see that. I really wanted to see that movie too, um, but that was good. But then the director which was interesting. He's an Italian director. His name is Stefano Solima. And he did one that I enjoyed called Gamora. I saw that. And there was a couple of other ones, but I'm not really familiar with. But he, he's done a good job. He's And most foreign directors have a different look and feel at the way they did it. So this one was really interesting. So they had two good writers I mean, a good writer and director on here. So I think it was really worthwhile. I was kind of cautious about the director because Dennis um, V did such a good job. But this guy did a great job at handing, getting it handed off to him. Anything else, babe? Nope. Excellent day. BougieBlackBrother.com or find us on... Fade to Black Cinema. That's Fade to Black Cinema. Um, on all podcast downloads, be prepared. It should be in the Google Podcast app as well. Um, I'm trying to make sure it's actually filled into there. So you'll be able to get it there. Or go to Podbean. Um, bougieblackbrother.podbean.com where all of the podcasts are located podcasts are located but leave us some comments on bougie black bro on twitter and instagram check us out and leave us some comments and we should be ready for a couple more i think ant-man's still coming up so there's a couple of other ones that we're doing for anywho thank you so much and we'll see you next wednesday on fade to black cinema later bye